But that journey in itself is the medicine right now because all these layers are felt within the voice, within sound. It's you can't mask anything within the voice. It's it's very pure. It's directly connected uh, to the state of being that you're in, what you're feeling. And it doesn't matter what it is, but the voice, it cannot mask anything. Welcome to the Seeing in the Dark podcast. My name is Nicole Costeras, and I welcome you in a space to find a deep trust in yourself, your intuition, and a deeper intelligence of life. In this podcast, I offer ways to cultivate your intuitive gifts and dive deep into the mysteries of power, purpose, and soul leadership, so that you can remember your deepest core and let your truest potential come alive. Dark, primal, shamanically wild, crystallized bright, and subtly intuitive. Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the Seeing in the Dark podcast. I'm here today with Jennifer Ann and we were actually noticing that we should have started recorded earlier because our conversation immediately was very exciting and juicy. And um, yeah, Jennifer, I think that I met you for the first time actually recently because there were multiple people trying to connect us over time. And finally we found our way uh, to each other. And yeah, it was a really inspiring connection from the start, I feel. And so for the ones who don't know Jennifer Ann, Jennifer Ann is a medicine singer songwriter and a ceremonial facilitator who bridges worlds. That's such a beautiful title. (laughs) <laughs> we, were very much. Sharing, we were just sharing before we started recording we were sharing about that we both actually have a little bit of a resistance towards um giving our work a title because it's such a untitable thing that we do sometimes right so do you maybe want to share a bit about what had you decide to connect your title to medicine, singer, songwriter, ceremonial facilitator, and world bridger? (laughs) (laughs) Well, the thing is, is that um, being connected to music and partly to the music industry, um, it's like I have one leg in and one leg I, I don't have in because I never started to play music or share music from this place that I wanted to be an artist. But as I developed and walked that path, it became more and more um, part of the music industry, I guess you would say. And there's like also a really big growing field at the moment of people that are really birthing and and sharing uh, music as a medicine. And that's basically coming from a ceremonial space or a yoga space. And this is also my story. Um, So I started playing music uh, when I was in my first yoga training, and it was because I just really loved the chanting, because it would quiet my mind, because it was like my mind was just so intense, and it was like all over the place, and I couldn't guide it. And then understanding that that the, the chanting would calm that down, it would bring it into one direction. And that feeling, I just wanted as much as I could get from that. So I understood at some point like, oh, there's only like three or four chords for a mantra to play a mantra. So I started to learn to play guitar and that developed more and more in also starting to write songs because songs were coming through. Um, And then it's, I, yeah, I started, okay, so people want to buy my music. I'm recording albums. So, okay, what's happening? Uh, I I need like a, a title, like we just said, or I need a way to describe this music that I'm bringing into the world. Um, And it took me actually quite a while to kind of get to this point, like, yeah, this feels okay. Um, And sometimes it's also described as a meditative singer songwriter. But I think at this point, medicine singer songwriter suits me better in a way because my music is not only meditative and I don't think that music always needs to be meditative. And Mm -hmm. there are people on a really strong path with that. I guess people could get into that state with any song that I play. I guess it's possible, but it's not necessarily meditative to me. So, Mm, yeah. Beautiful. (laughs) So what would you say is the biggest difference between a medicine singer-songwriter and a regular singer-songwriter? Well, I think the biggest difference is the intention of where we are coming from 
So I started to play music as a means to heal first myself. And then as I started to share it with people, I understood that other people were experiencing healing and medicine within the songs I was sharing. And so the core of sharing this music is the transmission of medicine, is the transmission of healing. It's not about the recognition or the artistry in that sense of the music industry. So that's why I say I'm one leg in and one leg out because there's a lot that does not attract me to the music industry. Um, but as you're reaching more people, it kind of happens. So then like Spotify comes up or SoundCloud and sales and, and then it's like, okay, so I guess now I'm part of some type of musical industry, but it was an effect of the mission. It wasn't something I was chas chasing in itself. Mm, beautiful. I love that because there's like one thing I speak about when I speak about soul-based leadership. It's so deeply embodying your own unique essence that you naturally assist, teach and inspire others from that. So that's exactly what you're pointing towards here. Yeah. It's really birthing the work from inside out. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So have you always been comfortable with your voice? Because you said you started uh, singing, uh, chanting in your first yoga training. How was your connection to your voice? I just start to laugh because it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was like so far from, from being comfortable with anything. Like the way I looked, the way I felt, uh, the way I moved, everything was uncomfortable for a long time in my life, including my voice. And being in front of people sharing music, that was like, wow, that was a whole different world for me. Like I couldn't even really think of it. Um, but it started to happen through the mantra chanting circles where people then ask like, oh, why don't you play a song? Or, oh, can you chant? Because, oh, you have such a lovely sound to, to your voice. Um, but I remember the first chanting circles that I actually led a, like led a chant. Uh, after that, I had to like go out of the circle to just cry <laughs> because I, uh, there, there was just such a big gap between what other people were perceiving and how I was perceiving myself. Mm. And uh, I was super insecure, um, yeah, about many things, including my voice. Uh, so it's been a whole journey to come to terms and to be able to share um in a more comfortable way in mm. this moment but that journey in itself is the medicine right now because all these layers are felt within the voice within sound it's you can't mask anything within the voice it's it's very pure it's directly connected uh to the state of being that you're in what you're feeling and it doesn't matter what it is but the voice it cannot mask anything mm. So this is, yeah, when you go through journeys and then you continue to, to share, uh, it just adds on to more space where people can, can feel into themselves to be activated or released or relaxed or whatever it is that they're needing. Um, but that whole journey is heard, yeah. Beautiful, I love how you shared it, that the journey is what brings the medicine in the voice or what is the medicine in the voice amazing yeah yeah so people sometimes ask me for tips or um like how can I get really good and I just think like I can't answer that because and I uh, yeah of course you can learn techniques you know and you can get a lot better and you can get your voice crisp cl crispy clear and beautiful and there are for sure better technical singers than 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 I am but that's not my journey I'm not here to do the technical parts I'm here to share the medicine yeah of the voice of the journey i love that yeah i have a little friend that's joining <laughs> yeah welcome friend yeah so i feel curious because you said in the beginning you were actually being invited to share your voice more and you were not feeling so comfortable with your voice what do you feel were like what started to help you more to get more comfortable with your voice yeah so what what happened was that um, somehow I was attracted in in a way to the the energy exchange um, from me towards multiple people, even though it was in the beginning a very difficult and and challenging exchange uh, to be with. 
somehow something inside of me was attracted to it, apparently. So I kept going on with it. I kept going through the fear, through the blockages, through the unknown, because I just, I just could feel like there was something there. There was some type of like gem inside of it all. And by, by keep going back uh, to it, um, I got better, <laughs> but it wasn't, well, this, well, not, a, I, I'm thinking about what was the journey um, within this. It was a lot of chanting with myself in groups, more, more that actually than the, the leading of it. So I just remember going to a lot of circles myself and doing a lot of practice w with a lot of chanting. So the Kundalini Yoga, um, they have a practice in the morning, which is called sadhana. And uh, there is like an hour of chanting. So I did a whole lot of that. And the cat is very curious right now. <laughs> yeah. Just wants to give some love to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> What's the name of the cat? Mao. Mao. Yeah. Like the, I think there's a Chinese dictator that she named uh, him after. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he he just walks over the table. It's like this is my space, dictator. and uh, you can't tell me to not do it. Yeah, I'm just sensing back to what wants to be shared. Yeah, so I heard you share that you you were more so singing with yourself than that you were leading a group to sing with you. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because when trying to get the full question that you got, but the the journey to become better at it was actually my devotion to just chant no matter what and I then you know so this and then from there and the the opportunities kept coming to chant with people and lead certain parts and it, it grew and it grew and it grew but it was for me a very natural process also a very slow process and uh when i look back I also really understand how necessary it was for me that it went so slow because I had so many insecurities and so much pain and trauma that I was uh, healing also through uh, growing within chanting and music and sharing. And there was a lot, lot of layers for me to uh, reveal within myself and to myself. Um, so as you cannot mask anything in your voice towards others, you can't mask anything towards yourself <laughs> through your own voice. So the vibration of your own voice, even now I'm becoming more aware of that. The voice is like, I can feel it resonate in my throat and then in my chest. And when I go on and I keep speaking, I can feel it going in my belly. And then even in my, my, my pelvis, the pelvic area, the sit bones, like I can just hear and feel the vibration going through my body. And if I go even further, I can even feel that the sound is traveling all the way down towards my legs and my feet. My hands are becoming activate, activated. And so to discover that the voice and sound travels through water, for example, and we're made of water. Mm -hmm. So once we become aware that we can feel the voice like in every cell of our body resonating and it mm -hmm. travels. And so when we're, we're working with the intention of healing or we're working with certain healing mantras, then we are actually changing the vibration of the cells and the waters in our body. So it was a very strong for me to go through uh, my own cleaning and cleansing through the voice in that sense. Yeah. Beautiful. Do you feel that the more you started to heal with your voice, do you feel that also uh, directly influenced the way you shared your message with the world? Because I experience you as a very powerful, centered woman and, and powerful leader also. I can feel the leader in you very clearly. 
So I feel curious to the connection with you becoming more comfortable with your voice in singing, if that was correlated directly to being comfortable with you sharing your message into the world. Hmm. That's just interesting. I, I kind of got stopped in my in my in my thought of like, ah, leadership, because I'm really actually, it feels like I'm not not so long ago uh, that I became really aware of the responsibility that it has mm -hmm. and that I'm actually really accepting that role. <laughs> so even though uh, for others, it might felt like that it, up until quite recently, I just felt that I was on my journey doing what I needed to do to heal myself mm -hmm. and to develop myself. And now I'm coming to this place that I'm feeling, oh gosh, leadership oh yeah this is actually really something that you can step into and be really aware of and conscious of um and yeah and and so this is happening on on a deeper level i think it was there but it was i didn't really activate it in a way it was something that was natural um and now i'm i'm consciously choosing to really develop it um but yeah going back to the voice um <clears throat> I do think that that was something that was really pivotal because it literally gave me a voice to speak to others. Yeah. So yeah, you know, when we communicate towards others and if everything is in the voice, then the way that we use the voice is, is very important uh, how we connect to others. Um, because yeah, I, I used to be in theater before I went into the yoga and into this whole journey. Um, I studied mm -hmm. theater and there's something that they they call a uh, subtext in Dutch. So it's like um, the energy that is behind um, the, the words that are said. So mm -hmm. a, a, a couple, for example, and the, the man, and they, they're having a lot of troubles, like all this drama, you know, in, in, in theater, but they're having a lot of tro troubles. And the man says, yeah, I love you but it's like really cold and, you know, like, <laughs> I love you. I think like just it, no love is felt within those words. Um, and I think this is something that happens a lot in communication. Like we say these words because they're program we're programmed in a certain way. And this is how we think that we need to share something. Um, but the intention and the feelings behind that, which is actually fueling that what is being said is, more important I've noticed than the words itself mm, yes because we're really sensitive we're sensitive beings we feel those vibrations very strongly even if it's unconscious they reach you yeah yeah this is also why you feel that in this new way of leading um, that it's so important to be transparent as a leader um, because I feel that we as a humanity, we are becoming more sensitive. So if we are saying something, but we're vibrating something else, then people will feel it. Yeah. yeah. I and love even if they don't, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I love this piece because it invites transparency. Mm. Yeah. yeah, because even if, if we're not conscious of it on a subconscious level, something is happening. Yeah. You know, so yeah, there is something happening in the world and people are noticing right now that things are being said, but they're feeling something else within their, their bodies, their souls. Mm -hmm. uh, not to go too deep into that or, uh, but, but yes, this is a, a big question for me is also, so who are going to be these new leaders? Mm. What type of people are standing up right now? And what are they bringing to the table? And then I think that transparency, what you're touching upon is is very important. Yeah, yeah. And I feel also what's important and you touched upon it earlier was that you said, um, I ask you what helped you to really get more comfortable with your voice. And you said it was just like, keep on chanting no matter what. So you were keep on choosing you. I was in a conversation uh, last week with uh, Greta and she said, all you have to do is choose you and the rest will unfold from there. And I feel something similar here, what you were sharing. I just kept on choosing my voice, kept on choosing the chanting. And from there, opportunities start to come your way. And I feel something similar when it comes now in these times where, like, like you said, who are going to stand up and share their voice? I feel a, an important element in that as well is to keep choosing 
what feels true for us, you know, and to, and to stand for that to what feels true for us. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's really beautiful that what you're expressing and, and saying about, about this. And at the same time, there's a question arising in me and I think a lot of people are dealing with this is like, but how do you choose for you? Mm -hmm. There's multiple questions that arise. Like, how do you choose for you if you don't know, know who you are? Mm -hmm. Or if you've never been taught that that's a good thing? Yeah. Or you know, like, there's so many different situations where people are led astray from who they truly are. And to believe that that is something that's very important and that we've really come here with a mission and a purpose and meaning also that sometimes you will be rejected by others mm -hmm. because you were playing a certain role to to keep some type of balance or harmony uh, within certain relationships so, um, yeah. that were needed or you needed to survive or develop and and that it can change a lot when we are when we become really true to ourselves and how that could also bring in loneliness and despair and not knowing and darkness and uh, just so many questions, you know, like more in the beginning for me, at least it was more questions and answers mm. and how to navigate all of that. Yeah. And then to, to come to this understanding, but wow. Okay. So I'm actually really important, but not just me, like every other person, but not just every other person, but every thing that's been created has like a purpose and a place and yes. okay so when I tune to that like I can go with the flow in that sense then that then life becomes more flowing more abundant more vibrant more alive more beautiful yeah. in every way because we're embracing it all yeah yeah, I think what you're pointing towards here is when I speak about soul-based leadership, I also speak that because sometimes people say, how can you, because my mission is to see a world full of female intuitive soul-based leaders. And sometimes I get the response of, but wouldn't it become a mess if the world is filled with leaders? And then I say like, no, because we're all guided by the one leader that is the deeper intelligence of life. You know, the one leader that is the mystery or the universe or God, however you want to name it. And I feel so in the end, it has nothing to do with us, but it's a surrendering to a deeper intelligence that wants to move us. And so when I look back into the times where I was challenged and was doubting or disconnected, it was that spark that you talked about earlier in our conversation, that spark that told me there is something here, even it scares the shit out of me, even if the people around me don't agree with me, there is something here that just feels like truth to me. Mm. yeah mm. yeah bringing up so many different thoughts this conversation it's really yeah. nice <laughs> what's next um but i i'm interested in in uh what you said about the leadership mm. Mm. and let me see how to 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 ask what your what the deeper layers of that is because if if everybody is a leader let me see where i'm going right here <laughs> yeah go with it um so i i had i i shared your opinion for a long time i said i i believe that everybody is a leader and i and and there's part of that that i i still believe that that everything or everybody has leadership within themselves because we need to be able to, to lead ourselves and that is connected to that source. Yeah. But this is like one layer of that. And in the past years, what I've been researching is the roles that we have. Mm. And when we're looking at uh, teams or communities or collaborations, it's like we're in a, we're in a circle and within the circle, everybody is equal. So we all have that place. Yeah. Um, and the leader or leaders, because it can be multiple leaders working together, depending on what it is, they also just have a place in the circle. Yeah. But it's not that in that sense, everybody is leading like the whole. 
Yeah. And I like the metaphor of like being on a ship. And if you want to go with your ship, you want to go somewhere. It's the captain that's making the decisions. But also if you, you ask the guys on deck or women in that sense, do you want to be the leader? Most of them will say, no, thank you. No, that's the captain. Yes. Because they know how much responsibility it takes and how intense that journey is, how many layers it has to actually lead, for example, a group or a project or yeah. a business or whatever it is. And because I started to research that in, from different ways, like, so what does it truly mean, leadership? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm still, I'm still like kind of, I love that you, that, but yeah, I love that you bring this in. I know this excitement in me to <laughs> okay. this more. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, so I think there is like, I think we're speaking to a bit different layers now. So I feel like, um, uh, so when I speak about everybody is a soul based leader, what I mean is that everybody can so deeply embody their own unique essence that they, that they, are a walking transmission for the ones around them. Mm -hmm. so everybody holds an, their own unique gift that radiates a transmission to others around us, right? So in that sense, there is a, a transmission from all of us to each other. And I feel once we can all surrender, because also for me, soul-based leaders are guided by the one leader that is the deeper intelligence of life. And for that, we need to make a shift from moving through life to being moved through life by something deeper. And I feel when we can fully surrender to that deeper intelligence moving us, I feel that deeper intelligence has a natural way of gravitating us to our natural position where we are supposed to be, so to speak. Mm. And that can be the leader of a group that can be the captain of a ship. Only it's guided from a deeper intelligence and not by um, like the group voting, like, okay, these 10 people say you should be the leader. So you are the leader now, right? It's from a different place where the roles that we are like, I don't know if supposed to have is the right word, but the roles that we are meant to have that we naturally gravitate towards them mm. by being moved by that deeper intelligence. And that still means that we can be the captain of the ship and other ones are, mm. I don't know, like uh, dropping the, the anchor down to stop the ship. And another one is like, yeah, everybody has their own gift and in that their own natural position in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, thank you. And I think then it's inclusive of what I spoke and what you spoke. Exactly, it's like, yeah. And it comes together in that. Yeah yeah and for me that's the new leader like the leadership that we're moving into in the world more mm. now mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. why all these old structures of leading are collapsing why there yeah. is so much transparency happening where all this shady stuff is coming uh, to the foreground you know yeah yeah it's like um even this morning i was reading the newspaper which i never do but somehow i bumped into an article about the German government sending very shady emails to uh, implement more of a fear structure. And it was in a regular Dutch newspaper. So there is these like things that were like hidden behind are starting to become more transparent because I feel this new way of leadership, this deeper intelligence is starting to have a more full place in mm. civilization. Yeah, and it's about working together and it's not about like from top down or even bottom up. It's about a circular spiraling way of coming together and seeing that within that circle, within the spiral, everybody has a place and has a purpose. And yeah, so yeah. that is that soul-based leadership, which you're, which you're speaking about and, and expressed so beautifully also. Um, but yeah, within that, we have also the bigger structures that still need to be navigated for bigger groups of people at the same time. Yes. And it's like you say, it's, it's going to be a calling. We're going to be called. We're going to be invited to step into that at the right time yeah. rather than being pushed forward. Um, it's going to be the calling uh, to actually step into it. And I'm excited and in a way also 
afraid mm. <laughs> what's coming. Yeah. I'm not really afraid because that's why I'm laughing, but I can feel like it's bringing up a certain like tension or so in my body um, mm. because it's like, it's so unknown in a way of what's coming. I don't know. Do you have anything like that in this time? Yes, for sure. Yeah, even you naming this, I, I just feel my energy like becoming a bit shaky <laughs> because it's so unknown. But also I feel like I see now still like in Holland specifically now, we are still on a timeline that I think, oh my God, where are we going with this, you know? And that can definitely bring up waves of fear or unclarity or shakiness or, yeah. But it's like you said at the beginning, I really love that you shared that there is also this spark, you know, like a deeper knowing that something very important is happening here underneath the service. Yeah. But then when I tune in when that would fully like pop or something or come out, you know, I, I don't there, this I find very hard to sense. I don't really clearly feel a timeline. Like last year, I thought that by now it would already happened, but it didn't. So I, I can find, I feel that spark and I feel a deeper truth of everything that is happening. And yet I don't feel clear on the timeline of it. Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe time is also going to be less relevant <laughs> moving forward. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. And it's also the invitation of all these feelings to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the self. And um yeah, this is also where I feel, yeah, to bring it back also to like the sound and the music mm. that 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 can be really important because I've noticed these times that I felt shaky, for example, and um, then when I sing, it's gone. Like mm. within a few minutes, it's just gone. And I just like, everything opens up and clears out. And I'm also now recently in Amsterdam and there's a lot of energy in the city. And I'm noticing that I get on my bike and I bike around and the only thing that I'm doing is having a massive smile and singing. <laughs> and I'm just having so much fun. Also when it's raining and when it was snowing and like, I'm just like, I can't stop singing because it feels like it's just like clearing whatever's around me and like paving the road forward because w when we sing, that's our prayer. That's what we literally are giving to the energy around us mm -hmm. and what the intentions that we're having and then what we're bringing out. It doesn't even matter what song it is, like whatever song you know, you know, so I got deeper into like these sacred chants and that's a whole topic in itself, like why and where they come from and what it opens and what it means and all of that. But in the essence, when we're singing, it's coming to this very pure and natural sound that we have in that moment because it develops over time. Yeah. Um, but if we just understand the bit of the intention that we're having, so the feelings that we are having, while we are sharing this breath of life, this song, this, this, this vibration with our surroundings, because when we breathe also, we br we're breathing out water and we're breathing in water. So when we are purifying with the highest intentions that we can have while we're speaking, while we're singing, we are purifying the waters just with that. And so I feel, uh, I think that's why I'm feeling so attracted also to just like bike around and sing and oh, blah, 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 because, and I'm just really <laughs> happy. And uh, I'm just also noting, noticing the effect of the other people around me that are just by looking at me, they start to smile. And then I go, oh, there's another person smiling. Oh, there's another person smiling. And, and people are just so nice to me. Because <laughs> but just a little story yesterday, what happened was this guy, he, he, he almost, I, I, it was like a, the car was going to the right and I was going straight and we both had green and he didn't see me for whatever reason. So I am, well, he almost hit me or I almost hit his car, but I wasn't, we weren't going really fast. So everything was okay. I didn't feel any type of anger or frustration around it, but he stopped and he opened his window and he said, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I said, oh, oh, it's really okay. And just, I just really appreciated him acknowledging that he didn't see me in that moment and sharing from his heart, like, I really didn't mean to, to hurt you or to cut you. And 
that just like it just gives me so much hope when people are like that mm -hmm. with each other yeah. you know like it's so beautiful because uh, we all make mistakes or do things like that but then to be able to acknowledge oh my gosh I was wrong and I'm so sorry um, even though it wasn't really needed but to say that and then I could say that's totally fine have a nice day and he and then he has a smile again and we both go on feeling great mm -hmm. but it could potentially be a dis disaster you know those yeah. types of things that you get really angry or frustrated or upset and it was only beauty you know so within yeah. every like potential catastrophe could could also be like a beautiful experience and this is like I feel that when you say like that pop so in these times like it's really deep and this could potentially be a massive catastrophe like a big thing exploding but that's only if you choose to see it that way yes so it's up to us like the prayers that we put in the intentions that we put in the experiences the, the experiences that we are creating in each and every moment with ourselves first and then with the surroundings uh what's going to show up for us in the future um love that. for me i'm just feeling that the songs at this point are really important to keep singing um yeah. it's fun and happy <laughs> beautiful yeah so i have i have two more questions for you and the the first one is for all the ones who are listening now and they feel inspired by all the things you've been sharing about the voice and becoming more comfortable with your voice the healing power of the voice is there something like maybe a favorite practice or something that you would like to offer them to deepen the exploration with their voice mm. and through that also their message well, a thing that I got really um, comfortable with is connective breath. And so I've been doing that pretty much on a daily basis. Um, for me, that's like a very short practice, um, but it aligns me like in a, in a few minutes just by breathing like that, coming into the full connection uh, of life and life source. And then, yeah, and then bringing it into a prayer state. So what are my intentions or... Is there something that's bothering me that I need to give back so that I have more space to live more freely uh, today? Because it's basically because it's on a daily basis and daily practice. Um, and for me, I feel that the breath is because it, it's also the carrier of voice in that sense. So it's like when we free the breath and the breathing, we're at the same time creating uh, more space for uh, the, the sound to travel. That's what it came down to, what I was understanding more and more about the breath. Um, yeah, I've been in this, in a way, like a very chaotic period. So uh, I'm reinventing myself also like on a business level, um, what what I can offer. And um, I've been doing a lot of really small things lately, which have been really nourishing to me. Um, in the years before and with touring with my work, it was, a lot of like big groups with a lot of energy and it was more about the collective energy and the collective transformation that we were going through and also exchange of the collective as a group and um in the past yeah year or so it's been more about one-on-ones and going really deep with each other really getting to the core and helping one or two people on a very, very deep level, and then mm -hmm. seeing that transform. And for me, that's been really beautiful. And um, again, soul, for my own soul, it's been very nourishing. And so I'm feeling I need to reinvent myself because of due to the state of the world, there are very little opportunities to, to do group work, um, mm -hmm. for me at least. And I, I've taken my time in the last year also to kind of relax into what's happening and then, yeah, really finding the joy in the depth of working one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and from there now, I'm, I'm going to bring it back into a structure. So I kind of left that for a while to allow myself to discover uh, what it is that I'm enjoying of this time and, and the, yeah, the, the other type of transmission in the work. Um, yeah, 
<laughs> so I'm, I'm just thinking about what, what am I offering right now? And I'm officially not so much. <laughs> yeah, that was what, that was my next question. But actually I would, I also want to ask you if you maybe want to close uh, our time together now with offering your voice to the listeners in the form of a song or whatever, whatever resonates for you. Mm. Um, but before that, I, I wanted to ask you where can listeners or viewers find you if they want to know more about you? Mm. Yeah, so I think my website would be the easiest place to, to find me, which is uh, jenniferannsings.com and sings as in singing. <laughs> um, and yeah, I will, I'm, I'm, I will be restructuring my website. There's also a new album coming this year, which is called We Are the Ancestors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that we are the walking examples. Basically, we've touched upon this multiple times in this conversation also that we are the prayer uh, from the past, living it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so the songs have been birthed, a lot of the songs have been birthed quite a while ago. It's a combination of the songs that I now understand were visionary. Um, the text is like, it's so for this time and I tried to record them before on different albums, never came through in the studio. Like always something went wrong that it couldn't get uh, get recorded. And now like, I understand why that happened because they needed to ripen uh, a bit more to come into this time and space. And then it's combined with some new prayers that have been coming to me and some new songs. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking some more time to focus on that. And then besides that, I'm going to be offering probably also more online and I'll be doing some one-on-one -on -one work, some, some uh, private retreats and things like that for the people that are really ready also to go really deep and um, yeah, and transform certain things. But on my website, this will all come on my website. Um, I'm slowly updating it. Um, cause I worked a lot with the cacao. So working with the cacao is on there and there are some free things. I think there's a breathwork session on there and an ancestor meditation that people can download for free, which is available now, but I'm going to be adding some more, um, beautiful things to it in this upcoming year. So it'd be great if people, people can sign up for the newsletter and I'll be sharing it as I move forward. So. Nice. Thank you so much. Mm. Yeah. Would you be willing to close close this um, podcast episode with your voice? Yes, for sure. Nice. And let me see about if the microphone is the right. Um, yeah, I just I just keep um, singing this this song, and it's um, I want to say it right, but it could be that I'm wrong. It's a chant from the the First Nation people of North America. And see, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the tribe right now, um, but it's about the earth. And we're singing for the earth. And I just keep, this mantra just keeps coming to me. And I feel that it's so needed in this time. So every time when this chant comes through, I'm just feeling how I'm connecting myself with the earth and everything that's going on but also really just saying like, I love you earth and thank you so much for my life and that I can walk upon you and that you're teaching me and I'm being taught. And, and every time I sing this chant, it just reminds me of that. So, we tonansin, tonansin. I'll just sing a few rounds of that and we'll close it up. And um, yeah, I just really want to thank you, Nicole, for this beautiful work that you're doing. Really thankful for your invitation and that we can get to know each other a little better step by step and knowing that our fires are connected. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
po me moani to yolo nacen da zalka matli to unancen e po me moani to yolo nacen da zalka matli to unancen we to nancen to nancen we to nancen to nancen we to nansen, to nansen, we to nansen, to nansen, ipo me moani, to yolo nansen, tatsalka mate to nansen, ipo me moani, to yolo nansen, tatsalka mate to nansen. We to Nansen, to Nansen, we to Nansen, to Nansen, we to Nansen, to Nansen, we to Nansen, to Nansen. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to dive more into your message for this world, there is a free masterclass that you can access on the website womenofancientfutures.com. This masterclass, Connect to the Soul of Your Business, will help you to go into a communion with the soul of your offering for this world. You will receive a powerful transmission of its essence and find trust that this offering is choosing you for a reason. So go to womenofancientfutures.com and get access to this free masterclass immediately.